Hayden. He said, whom seekest you? And they said, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. And he stands up and says, I am. And immediately they all fall down backward because they are standing in the presence of the mighty God. John 10 and 30 says, I and my Father are one. Some try to say he was one with the Father, much as a husband and wife, or one as two people can be in one agreement. This weakens that statement. Other, other verses fully support that Jesus was not only the Son in his humanity, but also Father in his deity. John 12, 45, And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. So we, uh, we know that he is God in kind. John 14 and 7, Jesus told us that if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. You have seen the Father when you look at Jesus Christ. Jesus said, the Father is me and I am in him. John 10, 38. Jesus promised to be the Father over all overcomers. Revelations 21, 6 through 7. John 14 and 18, Jesus said, I will not leave you comforts. I will come to you. Talking about him coming back in spirit form. And he also said, it's expedient for I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Because he could not come in spirit form when he's already standing there in human form. Jesus prophesied that he would resurrect his own body from the dead in three days. John 2, 19 to 21. Yet Peter preached that God raised up Jesus from the dead. Acts 2 and 24. Jesus said he would send the comfort to us, John 16 and 7. But he also said the Father would send the comfort, John 14 and 26. The Father came, the Father alone can draw people to God, John 6, 44. Yet Jesus said he would draw all people, John 12 and 32. Jesus will raise up all believers at the last day, John 6 and 40. Yet God the Father quickens, gives life to, or quickens the dead, or gives life to the dead, and will raise us up. Romans 4, 17, 1 Corinthians 6, and 14. Christ is our sanctifier. Ephesians 5, 20, yet the Father sanctifies us. Jude 1. Jesus promised to answer the believer's prayer. John 14 and 14. Yet he said the Father would answer prayer, John 16 and 23. 1 John 3 1, 5 states the Father loved us and was manifest to take away our sins, yet we know it was Christ who was manifest in the world to take away our sin. Now either all these verses that we're talking about are contradictory or yet they complement. And we know that they complement because we understand that he is the Father in human flesh. Isaiah 40 and 3 prophesied that a voice in the wood of a cry, prepare you the way of the Lord. Matthew 3 and 3 says John the Baptist is a film of this prophet, and we know that John prepared the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Malachi 3 and 1 says, The Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. This is referring to and fulfilled in Jesus Christ. John 2 and 21. Jeremiah 23 and 5 and 6 speaks of the righteous man from David, a clear reference to the Messiah, and names him the Lord of our righteousness. In other words, Jesus, Jehovah, our righteousness. Isaiah speaking of Jehovah, his arm brought salvation. Isaiah 59 and 16. And his arm shall rule for him. Isaiah 40 and 10. Therefore, Jesus is the Savior is not another God, but an extension of Jehovah in human flesh to bring salvation to the world because we know that salvation is in Jesus Christ. Isaiah again wrote in 40 and verse 5 that the Lord would be revealed to all flesh. The Lord is always referring to God or Jehovah. Therefore my people shall know my name, therefore shall they know 
in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I, Isaiah 52 and 6. Yet we know that Jesus is the one who declared the Father, manifested the Father, and declared the Father's name, John 1, 18, 17 to 6, 17 and 26. Jesus is the one who is declared, and so we know that he must be Jehovah. The Lord said that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear, Isaiah 45 and 23. And but you know in Philippians 2 and verse 10 it says that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Again, we see here that either they are contradicting or they are complementing each other. And we know they're not contradicting, they are complementing. Uh, Zechariah offers proof that Jesus is Jehovah in the past beginning with Zechariah 11 and 4. The Lord my God. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 12 and 10. Who is he talking about? That is Jesus Christ. When Paul, who was Saul, was on the road to Damascus, the, when he saw a blending light, what did he say? Who are you? No, he's, who art thou, Lord? Or who art thou, God? Because when the Jew said Lord, he referred to as God. And in other words, he was saying, who art you, Jehovah? And the next words, I am Jesus. <laughs> Moses dealt with Jehovah God, Hebrews 11 and 26, says that Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ to be greater than the riches and treasures of Egypt. And we know, when we read that, that's why he left Egypt. Psalm 68 and 18 picks a scene in which Jehovah ascends on high and leads captive captive, yet we know Jesus ascended and led captive captive. Revelations 22 and 6, the Lord God of the Holy Prophet sent his angel John, but verse 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you. Um, when you, uh, if you're uh, following along in the Oneness of God books, you will look on page 73. We're not going to go into all those uh, names uh, because I'm just wondering if we will finish this. We might not even get finished this chapter today. But if you read down through here, you'll see uh, two headings. It has Jehovah and Jesus. And on one side it says Almighty, which is Genesis 17 and verse 1. But in, well, under Jesus, it calls him the Almighty, Revelations 1 and 8. In verse in the number 2, it says I am, Exodus 3, 14 and 16. And John 8 and 58, it says I am. So we can look through here and we can see the correlation of the scriptures that are used in the Old Testament and also are used again in the New Testament to describe Jehovah and Jesus Christ being the same. Uh, we know that there are compound names and these are the compound names that are used and there are 11 of them. Uh, the first one is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Rafi, our healer, Jehovah Nissi, our victory, Jehovah Nakesh, sanctifier, Jehovah Shalom, peace, Jehovah Sabbath, Lord of hosts, Jehovah Elon, most high, Jehovah Ra, shepherd, Jehovah Hushni, maker, Jehovah Tiskanu, righteousness, Jehovah Shama, ever present one. These are 11 ones that are used that are all show you the New Testament scripture to confirm these ones being done. The Jews did not understand how God could come in flesh. They did not understand Jesus on one occasion when told him he was the Father revealed, John 8, 19 to 27. However, on many occasions they did understand his claim to be God because they tried to kill him. Because anybody that claimed to be God, they would thought they were blasphemous. He made this statement, before Abraham was, I am. 
And the Jews immediately recognized he claimed to be the I Am, the name by which Jehovah identified himself in Exodus 3 and 14. So they took up stones to kill him. When Jesus said, I and my father are one, the Jews sought to stone him again. They sought to kill him when he said the father was in him because he was claiming to be the father incarnate. John 10, 38, 39. When Jesus forgave, the first thing that went through their mind, only God could forgive sin. Isaiah 43 and 25. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, healed them anyways and said, by doing this showed his divine power and proving who his deity is. It is amazing to see some people today not only reject the Lord's assertion of his true identity, but even fail to realize that he did assert. Even the Jewish opponents of Jesus realize that Jesus claimed to be the God, the Father, and Jehovah flesh, but some today cannot see what scriptures so plainly declare. There is one throne in heaven and one who sits upon it. Revelation 4 and 2. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and ending, and the Lord which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty. Revelation 1 and 8. Verses 5 through 7 make clear that Jesus is the one speaking in verse 8. Jesus defended himself as the Alpha, Omega, the first and last. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Revelation 4.11 tells us the one on the throne is the creator. And we know that Jesus is the creator. John 1 and 3. Colossians 1 16. Furthermore, the one on the throne is worthy to reach honor, power, and glory. And Revelation 4, 11, we read, The Lamb who was slain, Jesus, is worthy to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Revelation 5 and 12. Uh, Revelation 20, 11, and 12 tells us the one on the throne is the judge, and we know Jesus is the judge of all. John 5, 22 and 27. Romans 2, 16, 14, 10 through 11. Uh, Revelation 22 and 3 through 4 speaks of the throne of God and of Lamb. These verses speak of one throne, one face, and one name. Therefore, God and the Lamb must be one. The only person who is both God and Lamb is Jesus Christ. When we get to heaven, we will see Jesus alone on the throne. Jesus is the only visible manifestation of God we will ever see in heaven. God's purpose in having John to write the book was to reveal or unveil Jesus Christ, not merely the reveal future events. We're talking about revelation because the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Accepting Jesus as the Son of God means accepting Him as God because the title of Son of God certainly means God manifested in flesh. All John's writing elevate the deity of Jesus. The book of Revelation is no exception. It literally means an unveiling or an uncovering. Okay. I'll let you read through those the list in your books. Revelation 22, 6 and 16, though these references tell us that Jesus is the God of eternity and that he will appear in his glorified human body. God's glory will be the light for the new Jerusalem. Therefore, the book is indeed the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we know that because, you see, it talks about the fact there will be no need for any sun there because he or his brightness will shine throughout the whole land. And so he is the light. And notice, too, that when you uh, read about Jesus Christ when he was resurrected, there was no talk of blood because we know that the life is in the blood but yet revelation talks about the fact that he is the one that will give us life mm. okay. Jesus is everything that the Bible describes God to be and we see that because we know Jesus has the moral nature of God. 
love, light, holiness, mercy, gentleness, righteousness, goodness, perfection, justice, faithfulness, truth, and grace. All his actual prerogatives and characteristics of God himself were confined in Jesus Christ. Where there should have been judgment, he put forth mercy and grace. Where there should have been killing, he brought healing. Where there should have been destruction, he brought peace. Where there was turmoil, he brought righteousness. Mm. Everything and anything that was harmful to man, he fixed. Because you see, he was God, and he is God alone. There is none other. Amen. Now, you have about five minutes before your break, so normally I would ask for questions at this time. But I will leave that up to you for the next time.